All right, everybody, welcome to the Meadows and Makers podcast. I'm your get. I am your uh, DJ. I am your host, Greg Dowd, uh, and also known as Making Stuff in the Hive community. Uh, today, I put out the uh, word on Twitter a while back and trying to interview some fellow agorists that are making some products and try to shill for their products and, and get their stuff out there. So my guest today is uh, Duali of Han. She's a uh, homeschooling mama. Uh, with a handmade goods business. Uh, she is a self-described love child of Martha Stewart and Steve Irwin, but if she was raised by Alex Jones and Mordecai Ad- Adams, uh, she is a Christian agorist hippie. Welcome to the show, Duality of Han. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I appreciate you being here. And um, yeah, uh, I usually start off podcast just having my guests uh, introduce you, uh, yourself a little bit and like kind of maybe tell people a, b- a little bit about your story, like how you got to the point where you are now, maybe like uh, how you came to the philosophy of agorism or just liberty in general. And um, that's that's a lot of story there. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of goes way back, to be honest. Um, so. I mean, I guess we can, can kind of we can kind of start on the liberty aspect. I mean, I suppose um, a lot of people don't realize. Like, I know a lot of people their their foot in the door, so to speak, is usually like Ron Paul or something along the, those lines. And I'm one of the few where that's not the case. Um, for me, I started getting a libertarian mindset um, at a pretty young age after um, pretty horrific direct involvement regarding uh, CPS and them just dropping the ball and, and, you know, and I had a kind of a moment of clarity when I was about 11 years old, I actually got into a really big fight with my mom over it. And at the time she was horrified by what I said, because, Oh my God, you're saying some rebellious talk right now, you know? And then years later she was like, ah, she was right the whole time. And now she's like friends with Larkin Rose and, (laughs) you know, hanging out with Adam Kokesh in the past and whatnot. But, you know, um, wow. Basically, I had a moment of clarity. I'm like, you know, I'm being forced to continue to see my abuser. I've tried to tell them a portion, even just a portion of the things, because I knew I had no evidence for certain claims. You know, I mean, I wasn't dumb. I'm like, there's only so much I can actually really speak up and be believed on. And so I said the more believable stuff. And they didn't really care. I mean, we actually had one mediator. She took statements from me and I, I said, you know, my piece and we got back her statement. She twisted everything I said around. Like she made it sound, I mean, she literally just flipped the switch. So I'm sitting there like, was she paid to do this or like what happened here? But clearly my safety as a child is not your concern. And who are these people who have no idea who I am? No actual con- for my safety and well-being. No desire to know my history or really keep me safe. They're just doing this for a job. Who are these strangers to dictate what's best for me? Yeah. And I so I got into a big fight with my mom because I was like, I can't, I can't do my visitations anymore. Like I'm afraid of getting hurt, etc. And she, you know, on the flip side, she was afraid of breaking court order and potentially losing custody. But to me, it was like that just makes no sense. Like, why would you do that? And so I think that was kind of my first real big seed of liberty at that point was um, just I knew what was best for me and they were not giving me any options. And so I'm like, well, screw them then. Like what what gives? And the older I got, the more I started to see more things that kind of justified my beliefs, everything from how tax money was being spent in the public school system. I mean, I was aware. I remember being in high school and seeing, um, so the the last public high school I went to labeled at the time is one of the best in the whole state of California. And they only accepted people with like the best grades and all that, you know, jazz. And, um, they didn't have enough textbooks for me. They didn't have textbooks for me. And then the food, the lunch wow. line, my, I, by the time I was able to actually get to the cafeteria, they'd be out of food every day, oh, like wow. out of food. And so I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in one of the best, like, <laughs> you know, but then they have massive boom box systems in the center of the, you know, and all these the pointless in, things we just don't need. The administrators then, have awesome oh, buildings yeah. and stuff. And not only that, so 
my 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 parents they're antique dealers they would kind of like pawn star type thing where they'd buy stuff restore sell it and i started going with my stepdad to these and so then at the same time i'm seeing all of a sudden sacramento's like hey let's change all the signs that say speed bump to say speed hump <laughs> why <laughs> how does this benefit and what was how is that not complete waste of money so i'm sitting there like i'm struggling in school because you guys don't have books for me meanwhile you can you know it's just all those little things that kind of just kept feeding into it and i it just got worse and worse <laughs> over, <laughs> over time you know and and um, i might tell you i mean the stuff i'm dealing with now it's kind of the same it's like we are not really protected yeah victims are not protected in the slightest so um yeah that that kind of and then my, my parents, they started seeing it more and more and more too. And so now I'm like one of the select few where like their whole immediate uh, family is in the same so, liberty minded. Yeah. Brothers included. Um, but then the agorism aspect, I mean, I always kind of grew up w believing in like being self-sustained as much as possible. You know, um, my biological father was raised in the South and my mom from California, but Northern California area, lots of hunters and whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah. It's more woody up there, isn't it? Exactly. Like Bigfoot territory, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it was always kind of pushed like, you know, hunting good, farming good. Um, most people in my family, they didn't like working for other people. They were like their own bosses. Um, and I mean, on both sides of the family, it was like, no, I'm going to do things my way. And so I kind of was just already submerged in that life. And, you know, I haven't been my own boss forever or anything by any means, but, um, I did like to kind of do stuff from the side my own way, you know? Yeah. And so that's, it's just kind of that, in that regard, yeah, I've kind of just always grown up with that mentality that just kind of got stronger and stronger as I got older. I think a lot of people are, you know, like uh, people make money on the side here and there doing little side hustles and things like that. I think most people, you know, that they don't like to give their money in taxes to the state. You know, they want to keep that money for themselves. So uh, so that's interesting. So so you had some uh, direct harm from the government and that kind of was what kind of shook you uh, awake mm -hmm. to what the state's doing. Cool. Um, so, so yeah, um, I, I listened to your interview with Clint Russell a little while, while ago and heard your story a little bit about, uh, getting kicked <laughs> off of some of these platforms or trying to sell your stuff. Like, could you talk about that a little bit? Like what all platforms <laughs> did you get kicked off of and why oh, and what, what happened? There? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, um, have heavily suspicion like very good reason to suspect that um these big companies you know facebook twitter all of them they are all all or well, maybe not twitter because i actually have not had this problem with twitter at all but um instagram facebook which they are the same company they they, right. they are you know so but etsy and ebay like there has to be some kind of like blacklist deal going on here. Be and I say that because um, as I, I believe I talked about this on Clint's podcast too, on Liberty Lockdown. Um, at the same, so basically what first happened and this, you get a little backstory here. I was working as a bartender and a bartending teacher. COVID hit, bars were the first to get shut down. I was working a movie theater bar too. So I kind of got double whammy when, oh yeah. Yeah, so movie theaters and bars all kind of get shut down at the same time. Yeah. I'm screwed. There's no demand for bartenders. So I'm not even teaching people how to bartend because who's going to get a job as a bartender now? So I lose both my jobs at the same time. Man. And I'm like, I, I, I got to make money somehow, you know? And so I um, I used to sew to make, to make money. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll get a vinyl cutting machine and um, I can then start putting like images and graphics and stuff on the bags that I make, I guess. And people like that, but then they're like, well, how about you start doing shirts? And then that turned into, um, I started looking at other things. Like what else can I, what else is a good profit maker that I can do with this machine? And I was funny enough finding rolling trays, um, blunt rolling trays or on, on Etsy were actually really good <laughs> money maker. So I'm like, okay, I guess I can lean into that. And I kind of just, I just kind of went with the flow. I had like no intention of getting really into this kind of business. I just kind of let it happen, I suppose. And um, so this, again, this was during 2020. 
And around that time, there was also all the Black Lives Matter and Antifa protests and everything going on. And at that point, uh, libertarians were getting labeled as, you know, the Boogaloo Boys and all that and getting labeled as domestic terrorists and all this fun stuff. So because I was listing things on Etsy and Instagram, um, and at the time, this first shop, it was called Don't Thread On Me. So it was a direct pun. Uh, yeah, it was a direct <laughs> libertarian like pun. Yeah, my friend did the logo and he did like a mix of like the Gadsden flag and like threads. And you know, I mean, like I had it all over. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but I mean, look at my my handles and everything. I'm like, I'm all about those puns, so I had to. But yeah. because I was using those libertarian labels, I wasn't like none of them were really like violent or anything. Like the worst thing was um, a shirt with a rabbit with rifles behind and a crosshair that says "Hippity Hoppity Got Off My Property." Oh, like it was like nothing. That one, yeah. Right. It was nothing extreme in the slightest. But because of my libertarian logo and because i was using tags like liberty freedom um, voluntarism etc they closed my shop deactivated my listings etsy did and they sent me a very angry letter <laughs> about how i'm inciting violence and a wow. potential domestic terrorist Whoa. and but the thing is i got the exact same notification over the exact same listings from Instagram on the same day. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, huh, <laughs> like, what's <laughs> going on here? Like et Etsy, or not Etsy, Instagram and Facebook? Okay, that makes sense. They're the same company, I get it. Etsy and Instagram, same time, same concern, same word, mm, something's up there. Yeah. So I had to rebrand. I'm like, shit, now my they shut down my shop. I have to start all over again. And so I did. And was uh, it was it a permanent permanent ban on that shop? Yeah. yeah. For they Instantly. said you no were warnings. inciting violence? Yeah, no warnings, nothing. Just boom, you're gone. Wow. And so I started a new one, a new account and everything, and um, new name, new logo. And within like two weeks, I was like, why are some of my listings inactive? Huh. And I look and they put some of my Liberty listings under review to see if I was breaking any guidelines. And again, they were not violent ones. They just had those Liberty tags. Hmm. So I'm like, crap, you know, and I immediately just remove them. Like, I can't risk this getting shut down again. And so I kind of just been floating by um trying to kind of dilute the lip because unfortunately the libertarian geared stuff is really my money makers you know that's just kind of the following i have and right. so anything that has to do with gats and flag you know whatever that's just the stuff people want to buy so of course that's what i'm going to be offering but if i can't list it safely there's a problem there so i have to kind of dilute everything i finally stopped dealing with etsy because um other people it's not just me other people are having problems with etsy there was actually just a couple of weeks ago a massive week-long strike yeah yeah stars. i heard i heard yeah. something about that a lot of the creators on etsy yes. were just like let's just stop selling some stuff or i don't know exactly what went down you probably know better than me yeah basically they put all their they put their shops on vacation mode for the week and encourage buyers to just not buy from etsy at all whatsoever because of things like um hmm, Etsy allows not just handmade items, but also craft supplies for handmade items. So that's how China gets around it. And so they're selling mass produced, cheap quality oh, wow. stuff that other people can't compete against. Oh, wow. So, yeah, things so like. So it's not truly food. handmade. It's just it's supplies not. or whatever. Yes. And so people can't compete with China. Then they keep raising fees. They're slapping fees on everything you can imagine. And it just keeps getting. From what I read, I read recently, um, what was the exact amount? Just apparel sales alone through Etsy, like just people, like transaction fees from people selling just clothing, rake them in like several billion dollars in profit. 
Wow. And meanwhile, we're getting our transaction fees and everything raised and raised and raised and raised on a regular basis. Mm. So people are losing their minds. They're pissed off. They've had enough. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of just done. Like I, I'm walking on thin ice as it is with Etsy. And now they just keep getting worse. I actually had a few months ago. I noticed I wasn't getting any sales for like a week. And I'm like, what is going on? And I look at my shop and they deactivated all my listings. I'm like, why? They changed it to where you now have to put like which uh, shipping provider you're actually going to use. Like before they didn't do that. It was just like, how much is shipping going to be? And now they want you to put, are you using FedEx, USPS, whatever. I got no notification of this at all whatsoever. Mm. They shut everything down until I updated all my listings, what shipping provider I was going to use. And then they charged me to reinstate, like, like relist every single listing individually. Wow. So I'm just like you, I'm done. I'm done getting fucked with. Like I can't yeah. handle this anymore. So then I started looking up other um, sources and it's bad. Um, I found multiple websites that were like, oh, if you want to sell on different e-commerce sites, you can go here, you can go there. Articles written under a year ago. So I'm clicking on these sites. Half of them are shut down because they couldn't keep up with the government regulations. And so they weren't getting enough traffic. And so they just shut down their sites entirely. So, I mean, Etsy is really the big one. There's Shopify, there's Store Envy, but they really don't have anywhere near as much traffic, especially I looked into Store Envy. It was bad. Like there was just no, no traffic at all whatsoever. And um, so I was like, maybe I'll try eBay. You know, I'm having people tell me give eBay a shot. You know, they're having some decent luck. So I'll give that a shot. Four days. I lasted four days. And then I got an angry letter from eBay. Whoa, dang. I listed like 13 or 14 ashtrays and a purse. One of those ashtrays was a Gadsden flag ashtray. Huh. And I get an email from, e I actually read it off. I posted a part, like half the email because I didn't, I couldn't show the whole thing. But the first half says that essentially they suspended my account because I was a threat to the eBay community. Like verbatim, they said I was a threat to the eBay community. And so I'm like, what? Yeah, all I did was post an a like ashtrays, what? And I get, oh, and then they said, they, they sent the other email and they're like, yeah, you've been permanently suspended. If you try to create another account, you will be permanently suspended. Probably because I mean, they can see your IP address and stuff. I don't know. I didn't try to do another account. It was literally, this was just like a follow-up email, like a week later. Because I'm like, what? gives like i didn't do anything wrong you know i so what and then that was their half answer was you're a potential threat to the ebay community i'm like all i did was list ashtrays all i did is list ashtrays wow. one happened to be a gatson flag one there's other gatson flag stuff out there so why am i getting targeted and after under a week four days later my shop is shut down yeah that's all it took right so that's why i'm like okay there's got to be something going on here for Etsy and Instagram to have perform the exact same execution, the same wording at the same time over the same exact like listings and pictures. And then four days I make it on eBay over the same type of like, there's got to be something going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of other folks that are doing similar kind of stuff that are having problems as well? Yes, actually, a friend of mine, she had the same problem with Etsy because she started doing libertarian. Uh, she's politically aligned, you know, and she started doing patches and whatnot and she actually got the same um type she had her shop i believe she had her shop shut down um but she got the same warnings and stuff too around the same time that i did and she stopped etsy entirely because she's like i can't handle the, do the double standards yeah. antifa stuff is fine all over the place all these like behead politicians and do this do this all this all these calls for blood are all over etsy but hippie hoppity get off my property is a concern yeah defending your really? own personal property is a hard is a bad problem yeah wow uh that's that's insane so it's like uh it, that's that makes it tough because those are where a lot of a lot of people are mm -hmm. and if you i mean you could sell off of a, your own website but it's not as much traffic is like you said is getting it yes. out to those different places so it kind of yeah. limits your market well, for me, it's not so bad, but that's because, I mean, with Etsy, I was getting some Etsy traffic just from people searching, but it was largely people who found me through social media. 
So having just like a separate um, site that's essentially like a catalog, what I have available and then people, they find me, they see pictures of other people wearing my stuff or whatever. And then they're like, oh, where can I go to get one of those? And then, yeah, 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 like right there. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they see that and then they're like, oh, how do I get one of those? And they either just message me directly or they I can just be like, oh yeah, you can just go to my Shopify links in my bio and that's it. Um, so for me, it's not a huge deal, but that's not the case for most people. Most people do not have a social media presence and it's not like I have this massive following myself, but I mean, I have more than your average everyday person, especially one who's making basic white girl wine mom bullshit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's love a little harder to stand out if you're doing what everyone else is doing. So yeah, I love um, that meme where it's like, uh, it's like a girl. She's like, I lost like. 200 followers or something like that is like oh my god and then the guy's like over here and he's like bro i had three followers i'm famous <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's like it's like the banger tweet that like like that the one with the girl screaming like babe please stop posting on twitter you're not a micro niche celebrity and then it's oh, this one got seven likes what a banger <laughs> <laughs> what a banger seven man yeah. <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah that's just you know like so i'm very fortunate in that case where i but that's kind of how um that's always kind of how i've shaped because like i i didn't always used to do epoxy this is a, a relatively new thing overall for me and i kind of just fell into it you know like it was not a plan in the slightest and especially right now funny enough um epoxy work is actually a big fad with a lot of like millennial females <laughs> right now it really is and um you can tell too because when i started getting in, into this like two years ago molds it was pretty much just like, like silicone molds yeah very basic ashtrays a few things here and there maybe random little like paperweight things or whatever now i'm finding like molds for like egg holders and the most like random bullshit like there's so many more because there's oh, more it's demand. getting really sophisticated yeah Right. Yeah. There's more demand now. People are making more things and like, I need a mold for this. I need a mold for that. So now the, the people who make the molds are like, oh, okay, well, here's this. And people are buying them. So you have to find a way to stand out. And um, when I was doing sewing primarily, I was most, most people I knew were fandom type people, major like geeks. And, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, I can buy all these fandom fabrics and make these fandom bags and they'd buy it. And that's what happened. So that's kind of just what I did with this. I'm like, okay, well, now I'm working with epoxy. I'm making ashtrays. I'm making rolling trays. I'm making shirts. I, I'll just do Liberty ones. And that's worked out. But it's kind of been a blessing and a curse at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, how is it working with epoxy? I mean, I've done some stuff with epoxy, and uh, you always get the bubbles in there. So do you have, like, a little vacuum machine that helps you take out the bubbles? or? You um know? You, you, you can like... use a uh, pressure pot. I don't do that. I'm not going to lie. There's a little part of me that's a little nervous around pressure pots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're they're also, like, three. I've heard too many horror stories. Pretty and exploding. explosive, I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're, but they're also expensive. They're, like, 300 bucks a pop, you know? So it's, like, I don't know if I really want to do that. And I make the stuff I make is more shallow anyway. And I do it. Most things end up in layers. So uh, I don't really have to use okay, that. I so can just don't... pop yeah you could use like a heat gun or a torch and pop the bubbles that way ah, okay. so i'll do a layer i'll kind of let the bubbles rise a little bit um fun fact for anybody <laughs> who's um considering maybe getting to epoxy if you have one that's a little deeper and you need to get those bubbles out um grab a vibrator oh and just... put it on the side of the mold turn it on the bubbles will rise to the surface and you can pop them with your torch <laughs> I learned that on wow. Facebook. I'm like, what? Well, huh? Like, you're doing what now? <laughs> so I'm like, I need to test oh, this, makes sense. this yeah. theory. And I bought, I bought like a ten dollar one on Amazon. I'm like, I gotta try this. <laughs> but um, oh, that yeah, sense. that's the thing. <laughs> wow. So, but yeah, that's what I do to pot. I just use, I just, you know, my layers are only like a quarter to half inch at a time anyway, usually. So it's it's pretty easy. But um, yeah, working with epoxy, it all just depends on what you're making with it. Really, I just tend to do more shallow smaller stuff so it's a little simpler cool yeah I've, I've seen some of those and uh they look pretty badass like uh you put the little bones in them and stuff mm -hmm. and yeah yeah that is one of my that well that's kind of my niche too is i make the weird art um i actually one time <laughs> are you familiar with the uh thinking about those beans meme no 
<laughs> oh my god oh my god all right this is kind of old gold it's just, it, was on the, it was on the bush's baked beans facebook page some random like old ass geriatric guy in like horrible grammar just randomly types on the bush's baked beans while well, i've been thinking about those beans and it kind of just <laughs> so i made an ashtray yeah, me this hungry is so funny. Over here. i made it i made an ashtray full of beans and i put i've been thinking about those beans in the grammar and i put it in this facebook group called that weird art group and it's sold in like five minutes oh wow <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah no so i'm kind of it's so funny there's actually this this internet group on culture Facebook. it's a yeah. resin shaming group it's literally called put the resin down and walk away i have <laughs> listed in that group so many goddamn times <laughs> Stop trying to put no. different things in resin. No, yeah, no, they look, but it's so funny because they're like, I, one woman went through my, she found my shop and she made a collage of all my products <laughs> and she put me on there and my best friend, she saw it because she's in the group and she's, she's like, go look right now. And, but the comments, every time the comments are full of people going, okay, it's weird, but this is actually really well executed and I kind of love it. <laughs> I'm like, please, by all means, keep posting. I'm just getting more exposure this way. Please, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> keep roasting me. I love it. I'm making money. Let's go. Yeah. So you said you actually get, uh, I think I remember on Clint's podcast, you actually get some uh, some of your business through Facebook, right? Uh, you had some um, Facebook groups and stuff. I used to, not as much stuff. anymore. Um, that was more with my sewing. I definitely did for sure um i've kind of pulled away from facebook a little bit and i do get some sales through there but that was actually another problem <laughs> so i mentioned that weird art group i've been so here's how facebook algorithms work i've been kicked from that weird out art group because i keep saying weird out no that weird art group. <laughs> that weird out group um because what happened was somebody put up a an art piece to encourage weight loss and building muscle healthier lifestyle and because that group is full of sjw's they start debating on whether or not it's fat phobic to post that so and but there are other people in there saying like thank you so much because i'm actually on a journey right now and this is really inspiring so thank you for sharing this and like if anybody else has any encouragement i'd love to see it so now i've i had my own weight loss journey i used to be like 218 pounds and i had a really bad knee and just all kinds of problems and I went from that. I'm not anymore, but I used to be jacked. I went to being jacked. All oh, right? you went like real fitness, like. <laughs> oh yeah, no, out all I was just like fitness model, like yeah. And um, so I put up my before and after photos, and I and all I wasn't like mean. I was just like, yeah, I made this decision myself, you know, because I had two kids and I was struggling to keep up with them. The extra weight was bad on my knee, and so I did this, and here's where I am now. And I'm so glad I did it because it's I feel more mobile, I feel healthier, I can go out and chase my kids around better and interact with them. That got removed from being fat phobic. Oh, geez. and I got kicked from the group. Oh, so because gosh. I got kicked from that group. Facebook algorithms go, oh, you've been kicked from a group. So we're going to limit your features and groups now, including your own sales groups. Wow. So I wasn't able to add people to my groups or post things on pages or anything for a while for like months because I got kicked from that group over posting my weight loss progress in a weight loss progress thread. Just from that one group and from that one, you can't be associated one. with other groups and stuff. They've eased up a bit because that happened like month. Well, I mean, honestly, that's the thing. I got kicked from that group like two years ago. That's how long it's been. And even six months ago, I was still having problems like posting. They were limiting my features and I had to dig, dig why. Cause I'm like, what, what did I do wrong? And they're like, oh yeah, you've been banned from a group one time. And I'm like, that's the only group I've been banned from. So really, I can't make money now because someone got butt hurt that I lost weight. Right. really <laughs> so yeah i mean it's it's bad you like the competition is insane and it's not even just competition it's simply cancel culture just trying to silence you and prevent you the same people i know i said this on clint's too but i'm saying again the same people that say we all deserve universal income universal health care we all deserve equal rights to live communi communism bullshit blah 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 are also the first to cancel you and say you don't deserve to make money because you lost weight and that makes me feel bad Right. You live a different lifestyle, and I don't like that. I take that as a personal attack. I'm offended. So therefore, you don't deserve income, and neither do your kids. That's what they're doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, we talk, uh, you know, talk about like social credit system coming on board. Well, it's already here. It seems like. Mm-hmm. With everything oh yeah, that you're in a metaphorical about. sense, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, there ain't no waiting for it. It's already here. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, what are some solutions that you've found so far on how to get around some of this stuff? Like, uh, I see <laughs> that you started a Shopify. Uh, yes. And you have that posted on your Twitter. Um, yeah, I am a little bit nervous about Shopify because apparently they are kind of known to do the same kind of crap. Unfortunately, um, I haven't had it so far, but I'm kind of I'm being extra careful with what I do. Um, my Shopify, it, I'm rebranded. It's rebranded. It's under a completely different name. I'm doing like the same but different products. I'm doing more like I'm kind of leaning more into the hippie shit because a lot of my sellers are the ashtrays and rolling trays and now I'm getting to tie dye and I've been getting interest in that and and the, the the bone art. Now I'm like, okay, I can kind of roll with the earthy hippie classic, you know, shit like that. Go that direction. I'll leave all that in that shop. Anything that's more libertarian, I'll just go through social media and my stuff's going to be on prolibertarian.com. That way, if one thing gets shut down, I have a backup and I'm not completely screwed and I'm less likely to piss anyone off on Shopify or whatever else if I just keep it to pretty colors and 420 and inspirational stuff instead. Yeah. uh, I also interviewed Daggerus recently um, and he helps with Agris Nexus. And he Mm. was, he was telling me they have a listing thing on Agris Nexus. If you want to post a listing for your business or whatever. On I there. might be on that already. Oh, I don't okay. know. A buddy of mine. I don't know how much writing... traffic they get there. but Yeah, I don't know. Cause a, a couple of years ago, about three years ago, maybe um, a buddy of mine, she was writing for them and she did put me in an article on that site a couple, but that was back when I first started the apocalypse. This is like maybe six months within I started. So about 2020 it was in 2020. Um, Okay. So I, I don't know, if, but if I am, I'm going to have to update it, of course. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of like one of those hustle things, I guess. You just kind of got to hustle, get your stuff out to as many places as you can. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like anybody who I, I've been in the handmade business in some form for a very long time. I've done everything from like sewing to rabbit farming to cake decorating and competitive baking. And I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff, right? And so I've learned a lot of do's and don'ts. And I've learned a lot about the communities behind um, various art forms and mark, you know, and how they all act and how to get ahead through them. And Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they just don't really know how to stand out, you know, they, and they don't know how to really get their names out there. They don't know how to cater to, they, they get this idea. I'm going to sell this thing because I love it and I want to work with it. Okay, fine. That's, that's fair. Absolutely. By all means. But if it's that niche, you can't just rely on that niche unless that niche you know, quickly takes off. You kind of have to have that one wonky little niche that you're doing for you for fun. Hopefully it takes off. It's essentially, it's kind of like a don't quit your day job thing. Yeah. 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 That's, that is like that little niche thing is you saying, I'm going to be a stand up comedian. Okay. You be a stand up comedian, but while you're trying to be a stand up comedian, you still have to work your nine to five job. And so the other th- things that are, you know, are going to make more money depending on your community or whoever you're, whatever you can more easily sell to, that's your nine to five job. Do not get rid of it yet unless your standup takes off and then you can focus on that. That's great. So it is a hustle. You have to adapt. You have to, you have to be able to adapt in this kind of business. Absolutely. Just yeah. That's great things. advice. Yeah, it really is. That's great advice. Like, um, you know, you just keep working that side hustle on the side and you know keep building it and keep tr- like like you said to keep adapting and trying different stuff and figure out what's going to work best for you and yeah it's uh like constant hustle it is and um i mean goodness I, i've had people tell me like you really like i need to start doing tutorials and everything on how to get started because um but i i'm not gonna lie i don't feel like doing it that's way too much time and editing and effort i'm like mm, i don't think so but <laughs> yeah um yeah, I mean, people, like, they don't understand. And I th- I think they do. You know what? I take that back. I think they do understand. 
it is a very, any any sort of handmade business you get into any sort of any kind of business you get into it's competition yeah and that's where these sjw types fail they don't want the competition because they just want instant gratification they want money real fast so instead of really working to try and that's not everybody because i absolutely see some amazing dedicated artists out there that are just mind-blowing absolutely but the bulk the average person they're pumping out bullshit and then they're right you can see that yeah you can oh, see God, the effort that people put into their stuff and you know yeah. if they're not really making an effort you know people can see through that so well that's why the sabotage that's why the cancel culture because when they see other people who are doing better than them they will look for any way to shut them down oh they need to be canceled because they believe this they made this one they did this one thing and it's problematic so they shouldn't be allowed to sell here i mean they will it's backstabbing bullshit is yeah what it is and it's getting worse and worse because people are just caving in and letting them do it right right yeah it's uh it seems like uh well i mean we just gotta kind of build our own stuff i guess you know and and try to drive as many people to our own i guess our own websites and our own pl platforms because yeah all this stuff is getting yanked out from everybody i mean uh, anybody that wants to speak out, like, uh, you know, I follow Owen Benjamin. I like listening to some of his stuff and he's been like kicked off of everything like Airbnb, PayPal, <laughs> like freaking everything. It's Oh yeah. It's I know. I, I believe it. And, um, I'm kind of at the point where I wouldn't be too surprised. I mean, I, my stepdad, for instance, he's been working with, he's actually one of the original eBay sellers. Like when it first came out, he's been doing the estate sale market dealio since the beginning and i told him what was going on with ebay and he's like what and he was just mind blowing and he's like yeah this sounds like you're probably on some kind of blacklist like legitimately and everyone i've talked to they're like what on earth and so i mean it is it's kind of intimidating but that's just it you got to just kind of adapt and make your presence known and however whatever kind of exposure you can get you kind of have to take it and um i've been very fortunate to have a very strong community um, and social media with that. But I think a big part of that too, is simply like, we know where the weird ones, we kind of know where the outsiders. And so yeah. there's like more <laughs> drive where we have to support each other. Yeah. You know, cause again, if you're just a basic white mom making live, laugh, love shit, well, I can go to Cracker, not Cracker Barrel, uh, Pottery Barn, not Cracker Barrel. <laughs> um, Hobby I can go to Pottery Barn and get this shit. I can go to Ross and get this shit for God's sake, you know? Yeah. Um, but and so you're not going to stand out you have to do you have to figure out your community you have to cater that community without breaking your morals you know and don't do that right but um it is it's paying attention to the modern times i mean that's why like when i make my sales i usually it's usually in spurts like when i first did the wood chipper shirt that took off like crazy like that yeah. was my big hit <laughs> um I got a big surge of sales selling shirts that said punch government in the dick. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not going to lie. It was because I was shameless as shit. AOC released that sweatshirt that said tax the rich for like yeah. 65 bucks. And so I was like, all right, you can either spend 65 bucks and support a politician for this shitty looking shirt, or you can support a struggling single mom for 25 and get this one instead. Yeah. And that's how I got my surge of sales, nah. you know? So I, you have, um, I've sold ones, when Elon Musk said he's not perverted enough to be on CNN, I started selling <laughs> shirts that said this guy isn't perverted enough to be on CNN. I mean, I kind of, I have to pay attention to what's going on in the news. And then I make a shirt that reflects that oh, and then yeah. people buy it. Yeah. Like it's, it's a study. It, yeah. You have to pay attention to these things or you're just, you're not, I mean, fads are fads for a reason. Right, right. They come and they go and you got to keep up with the fads. Yeah, yeah. So, how uh, were you always kind of crafty? Like, did you kind of uh, have some of those skills from growing up? Like, your oh yeah, influences yeah. from your parents and stuff, or yes, absolutely. Um, my biological father, he liked to be. He was very much like he liked to work with wood. He was he worked with wood a lot. Oh, um, cool. But he would also dilly dally and other things too. Um, it's funny. I actually grew up around a lot of artists. My grandmother, she's an amazing painter. She sculpts. Like, she is exceedingly just amazingly talented like she used to get a lot of things that she needed by just bartering she'd make these gorgeous art pieces or do you know people go like oh yeah i have this boring 
whatever. And I want it to look more exciting and she would like deck it out. And so she would just barter that way. And I used to be so kind of jealous because I don't have like drawing and painting skills. I'm not good at like two dimensional stuff. And to me, that was all I really knew was two dimensional stuff. So I'm like, man, I've just got no talent, do I? And then, but I would make things, you know, I would, I would, I was in Girl Scouts a lot. So I would make little like bead stuff or I would hand embroider. And, but that to me, it didn't, it wasn't art because I would hear art class. I would hear art and it was always painting and stuff. So I just didn't really make that connection. And then as I got older, I realized I just have a more constructive, like my, my strength is in building and assembling and designing, not two-dimensional stuff so it kind of for a while I was not very confident in my art skills at all whatsoever and the next thing I know I kind of figure out my niche I'm like oh okay it's just a different kind of art it's still art it counts (laughs) yeah 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 well a part of the hive hive community is like uh people that forked from steam it and it's a it's a blog on there and there's a bunch of artists on there that got into the nfts when they started and like folks that were just just chilling and um you know blogging on hive and making some money off of that you know they start getting into nfts and now they're like fully supporting themselves on NFTs. oh yeah i'm sure i actually had somebody they didn't understand i like um when i was shopping for a new background i put up like four different ones that i really liked and people were kind of teasing me like huh the one with mushrooms and eyeballs or the one with mushrooms and eyeballs or the one with mushrooms and eyeballs like yeah but um this guy i guess he thought it was my own artwork and he was like have you considered getting into into making d uh nfts and i'm like no like that's not this isn't my work dude like this is, these are amazon stock photos bro like, um i'm not gonna lie if i was good at two-dimensional art i probably would have tried it honestly but that's not my forte yeah, some of the guys are they're they're like making prints, like a physical print, and then adding like augmented reality on top of it, and uh, and then you sell the physical print, and then it comes with the NFT and all this stuff. So so yeah, it's like more than just digital art now. It's like physical. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, I still don't understand all of it. I don't get it. I, I really don't. I don't get it either. But they're making money with it. <laughs> but it's, it's wild. Good for them, I guess. You know, that's kind of my thing. Is like, as long as it's not immoral, you know, make your money. Yeah. You know, fart in a jar for all I care. If you're not hurting anybody, yeah. <laughs> then make that bang. Yeah. So I'm wearing one of your shirts. Like, what's the process <laughs> like on uh, making one of these bad boys here? Um. So a common misconception: everyone thinks that I bulk print these and bulk screen print these. I do not. I order. The blank shirts, depending on what people want, they, they tell me a size, they tell me colors that they want or colors to avoid, and I roll with that. And um, sometimes certain colors or certain sizes, especially if it's special, like less common. Like if you're gonna ask me for like a 4x fuchsia shirt, that's gonna be a lot harder for me to get than like a large black shirt, you know. And it's gonna take more money, more time to get me, so to get to me, because um, I got to order them online. So I, but I try my best. And so I order the blank and then no, I do everything with heat transfer vinyl. So I have to go onto a program. I design the images. um, uh, So since I can't draw, I mean, I've I've talked about this publicly before because I'm not trying to steal anybody's credit or anything here or pretend I'm something I'm not. I don't have drawing skills. So I'll get like an idea, you know, like with the one you're wearing now, I'll have like just an idea pop into my head. and, And then it's like, okay, but I need to find a, an image of this animal or of this scene or whatever it may be. And then I'll go online and I'll look up SVG artists and sellers and I will make sure that they have permission for small business to use. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like, no, this is only for personal use. But 90% of the time they allow small business to do it or you have to buy a commercial license if you're going to do like 10,000 of them or more in a year or something like that. So I always make sure that there's permission to use it and um, then I'll get I'll get the design and I will incorporate it into whatever um, design that I want to do. With the one you're wearing, mm-hmm. I didn't have to do all that. I kind of, the the I use a Cricut to cut all the decals out and it comes with a designing program with a bunch of images already for you to use and they have what they call an angel program, I think it's called, where um, I think it's up to like, I think it's 10,000 per year. As long as you're not making like 10,000 shirts per year, 
Um, then you can use all the graphics for your business or whatever, all you want, no charge or anything. So like, that's what I did for the chicken part, you know, and then the, the, everything else, like I'm picking up the fonts. I'm thinking of, I'm laying it all out. I'm organizing it as such. I'm piecing it all together. And then I have to cut each color individually layer by layer by layer. Yeah. So when people come to me and they're like, oh, can wow. you put this on a shirt? And they give me like a shaded graphic and depth logo. I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do that. Like, that's just not possible. So I had to keep it a little simple, which is why I do a lot of phrases as opposed to graphics too. Oh, okay. And, um, and I try to keep the graphics to stuff that I think of on my own. I mean, some of them, you know, like, um, good people break bad laws. That's not my own. You know, I saw one, someone once said it and I'm, I saw it online. I'm like, okay, I kind of like that. And I, put it on a shirt um same with what i'm wearing right now i also made this one do no harm take no shit oh yeah Um, that's perfect yeah (laughs) yeah so i mean like i'll do that but i try to non-aggression principle right in the shirt right right exactly and so i do i try to um make as many as i can i try to do original stuff or parodies of things, you know, like Alex Jones is real and he tried to eat my ass. Like that was, <laughs> that was a parody. There's like, I saw this hat, this image of Guy Fieri, who best image on the internet. He's signing a, sh- a hat that says Bigfoot is real. He tried to eat my ass. But then Alex Jones released that episode where he said that he was going to eat your leftist ass. And then it got remixed. And so I kind of just put him together you know yeah um so like yeah i mean there's definitely some parody stuff there's some original stuff i try to but that's kind of the wood chipper thing that was an original you know idea i did have to find an svg of a wood chipper that would work and that took a little time (laughs) but but i got it done you know um so yeah that's that's pretty much my process is every layer by layer each color by color i got to do it that way and so it's one of those ther- so it's one of those thermal forming uh print machines or something like that like you cut out the thing you cut and them then out it, like, thermal forms of the shirt i guess you but you 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 like heat press it on basically you got you got to use like an like a really good iron or heat press and you like push it on there and get it all in there real good you know so yeah no i'm doing everything by hand myself wow yeah wow so that's why people tell me like we'll just use cafe press to do it okay i've looked into cafe press that's another problem thinking, because you can get shut down there too oh yeah no well a lot of people told me they haven't had that problem with cafe press they're like oh yeah i saw all kinds of stuff and i haven't had an issue my thing is the profit margin is so low oh. it is so low because I, mean, I i used to use cafe press when i was doing the cryptid bartender i was doing like shirts and stuff like that with my logo on it and um yeah i mean it was like the profit was so little and they would have to pay so much it's like it's not worth it like they're having to pay like eight dollars shipping shipping i can ship it for five you know and i i mean it just it doesn't make any sense for me to go that route so and especially when the designs are so simple i don't really need a custom print site when i could just does it take me a little more time yeah but it ultimately is better for me in the long run yeah yeah. And for them, because they're paying less. Like it, you know, cafe for me to make a decent profit on cafe price, I'd have to charge like thirty bucks a shirt plus they would have to pay taxes and shipping. Yeah. So it saves them money too. Right. So so sh- shifting gears a little bit here. Uh we got another thing I pulled from the interview with Clint was that you mentioned that you might start a podcast. Is that something yeah. that uh you're thinking about doing? Yes, I've just I've been a little bit delayed because I've just had a lot. I mean, I've been trying to, you know, work on orders and make money and everything. You know, I've kind of got a lot going on in my personal life that I got to fund right now. So um, I've kind of just shifted gears and focused on that and getting people's orders out as you know quickly as I could. But um, yes, that is definitely still something I'm going to be doing. Um, I've kind of been described a few times as the agorist shoe on head essentially (laughs) so i'm like okay maybe i can lean into this and roll with it um which is why i got like this background and everything i'm like yeah i can i can squeeze this in i can because i do have i do have another podcast actually with um a with my my very english (laughs) co-host um and uh, but we've we've been on hiatus because he's also had a bunch of stuff going on and it's like he had to move and all kinds of things so like he's on hiatus i had to go on hiatus so we're kind of at a pause 
but I'm kind of like, well, I can also do stuff on my own and then I can like, we can do both. Like we can figure out to do both and still have fun with this. But then I can also like do my own thing, say my own commentary, have my own guests on whenever I want, and then use that as a time to kind of show my own stuff as well. And that gives me more exposure. Um, I haven't done my first one yet. I need to, honestly, I need to, um, I've been on TikTok a little bit. Uh Um, I used to be more on that when I was doing the cryptid bartender stuff and because I got a following very quickly, I actually went like viral a couple times. Oh, wow. And um, so I had a lot of followers on that, but I haven't been able to keep up on that at all whatsoever. So I kind of just, that's on hiatus too. And, um, but I've been doing stuff on TikTok again and that's been getting a little bit of traction, but, um, and I will do little clips. I'll either do just kind of random political thought ramblings or i'll do little bits of me like making stuff you know oh okay um so but i'm literally just using whatever i can to get more exposure at this point honestly when i do get the podcast going it's going to be on odyssey i'm not going to be using youtube because youtube's doing the same shit right they're they're censoring they're shutting people down they're demonetizing i don't want to deal with it i'm just going to go on odyssey and do it that way maybe i won't get as much traction i don't know we'll see but People are getting sick of YouTube as well, and I'm not going to support them if they're going to be shutting everyone down because hey, they don't fit their narrative. Like, hey, no. Odyssey's been putting some great stuff on their platform now. They have tipping. You can go mm-hmm. live. You can do live streaming. There's like uh, you can tip in LBC or you can tip in you know dollars if you want. And, right. Uh, so yeah, they got some cool stuff going on on there. So they're I think they are going to overtake YouTube at some point. Uh, yeah i do have a youtube channel so i mean maybe i'll connect both and i'll do both odyssey does like to see that you have a youtube channel as well from what it looks like when i signed up for it so i mean i might do both but i'm gonna focus more on odyssey while youtube is kind of just like a back like a side thing and then if something happens with kind of like what i'm having to do with my shop so if i get demonetized shut down on youtube well i've got odyssey still going on so at least there's that yeah, I see that they did. They do. Odyssey has a feature where they can port over all your videos from YouTube. Yes. I yes. created my Odyssey account, and then I don't know if you have to do it like immediately or something, because like I still got to figure that out. But, uh, but yeah, I have like that whole catalog from YouTube, and I was like streaming uh, and doing stuff on this platform called DTube for a while, which was birthed out of Steemit and everything. Um, but yeah, like trying to get my content over to Odyssey as well so that I got it all backed up physically, but like, um, but yeah, I've been throwing it up there on YouTube, but yeah, Odyssey and float and all the other folks mm-hmm. that are trying to do more decentralized video stuff and, and, uh, building cool features like crypto tipping and stuff like that. I like to support those guys exactly you know i mean i i kind of knew about odyssey a little bit just because um you know drew hancock on twitter he works for them so every now and then he would say something about them and so i'm like okay well you know, i'll take a look at them and so i was kind of watching them for a bit and um <clears throat> same with things like gab and mines and whatnot like you know i'm i'm trying to give them a little more attention because i mean Twitter's not the best, but I haven't had the problems on Twitter like I've had with every other freaking site I've had to deal with. And I just know I'm going to have issues with YouTube. I just know it. Like, it's it's inevitable. Yeah. So I think if I'm, you gain, like, any kind of significant following and you're talking about some of the stuff that we're talking about, then mm-hmm. you just, like, they're like, nah, can't have that. No, exactly. And especially since I, ha- I mean, obviously it's not... Well, I mean, like Clint, Clint took off in like, what, a year-ish? He's doing pretty damn good for himself. He is. So, I mean, it's not like everybody's going to have that issue. My problem is the fact that I know I've already had problems with other sites. So, with that said, how long am I going to last on something like YouTube? Am I, is it just a ticking time bomb? Like, what's going to happen? So, I, I'm already kind of being watched over the dumbest freaking reasons. I mean, for God's sake, it's not like I'm freaking calling for burning buildings to the ground or some shit. I'm just like, Hey guys, go homestead and homeschool your kids and live in the woods. Like that's all I'm doing. Yeah. 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 For God's sake, that's all I'm doing. Like shit. What's but wrong with that? that gets right. That, that gets considered controversial. Um, but God, everything these days is controversial. Get healthy is con get getting healthy is now a right wing hard hard right propaganda now (laughs) according to msnbc i mean it's bad right so yeah i'm just i gotta i kind of have to lean into these more 
Yeah. Okay. Part of me kind of hopes Elon Musk takes over Twitter just for the fun of it. I know, even right? If, even if it gets worse, even if it gets worse, I'm gonna be like, you know what? This is hilarious. I'm I'm done. I just at least we're all fucked. Just make it entertaining at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I keep telling my my uh, audience that I'm ready for the fake alien invasion. Like, bring it on. I want to see the right. Fake alien. Oh my god, let's get let's get up, let's get Project Blue Beam going. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I would just want to see it. You know, what are they, right? What are they gonna, right? What are they we're all screwed anyway. Yeah. We're gonna go. We gotta go out with a bang. That's all I ask. If we're gonna go out, let's please just go out with a bang. That's all I'm asking. For. Yeah, show us the machine elves in the sky. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Joe Rogan just rises from you. <laughs> he just looks down at us like I told you so. <laughs> this just dissipates in the air. Chaos ensues. <laughs> Yep. Oh man, one can hope. One can hope. Yep. Alex Jones is sitting there, just like I told you guys. <laughs> right, right. Like, I told you. I must have told you. <laughs> he just smiles. Alex just Jones was right. I want to meet Alex Jones so bad. You have no oh, idea. Oh, he would be like, fascinating. People credit, to hang oh my out god. With. Oh my god. People credit Ron Paul for like their final kick, and you know, because they're already curious, and then they're like, Ron Paul was was my gateway. He's the one oh, that get. I got that. into no. Alex Jones hard. Yeah. Mine was Alex Jones. I'm sorry because my 18 year old, I was like Fox Mulder by the time I was 12. Okay, I was like, clearly I've got no reason to trust anything. What else can I not trust? And I mean, it's not like I was sitting there like the oh truth god, is out there. The right? Truth is it's out not there. like I was doing that. I wasn't like, oh my god, reptilians, reptilians, or some shit like that, you know. But I was like, okay, there's stuff going on behind the scenes. Like, what's going on? And so I watched when I was like. 17 18 years old i watched the bohemian grove oh yeah that is wild you know, like how the hell did you get but in there yeah oh my god i was like ah everything's freezing oh no there it goes but yeah i watched that and i'm like i fucking knew it <laughs> you know? i can't trust any of these sons of bitches and i and so I kind of fell down that rabbit hole and I wasn't like, I didn't believe everything he said necessarily. Like there's definitely a lot of stuff. I was like, mm, that's kind of a stretch. I need more of ev- Sandy hook, for instance, yeah. when he was saying like, Oh no, they were no real victims. They were all like, look, the way I see it, if you're going to sit there and say that the government is so evil and warmongers are killing innocent people, they're, you know, messing with our hormones, messing with our genetics, they're setting us up for disaster. Why would I believe that somebody with that kind of agenda would spare lives of innocent children for and you know i'm like no like we can say maybe the government planned it to incite fear paranoia get something pushed whatever i'm not going to believe that there were no victims i have no reason to believe that there were no you know so i mean it's not i i didn't like blindly follow everything he said but it was enough for me to be like yeah there's definitely stuff going on and like that was a huge like kick in the balls moment for me yeah I think, so while i don't agree with everything he does still hold a special place in my heart he's entertaining as hell like oh I'll, t- I'll tell you like I'm, this is I'm, like I'm so pissed that he used to be beautiful i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> like, people were tagging me like he's got fox Mulder vibes i'm like stop trying to make me horny for alex jones what the fuck is wrong with you people yeah. god <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of when I started uh, to look into some information, yeah, he was definitely one of the first places I started, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, no, it's great. Like, so, I mean. But he's like that gateway drug, you know? He's like kind of exactly. gets you in and it's entertaining. Exactly, And then, and then yes. you're like, oh, well, let me look into this and let me look into this. Let's see what, what Alex is talking about. And, and then mm-hmm. that can kind of lead you like, you know, guys like James Corbett who does a fantastic job on getting information out and, you know, like Richard Grove, I've been watching Grand Theft World podcast for a while now. That's he always does a great job, like laying out all the books and the context and everything for you. So it can, you know, Alex Jones is like the he's like the uh, the gateway drug. <laughs> what was I can't remember the topic at all whatsoever off the top of my head, but I remember seeing like um, a yearish maybe ago he was on joe rogan's podcast and he made some kind of claim and joe rogan's like no that didn't happen that's not right like no 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 and he's like no look it up do it right now like look it up and so he's rambling he's rambling he's being alex jones and joe rogan looks it up and he's like <laughs> <laughs> he gets this look of oh shit <laughs> like he's right oh dude you know? so i mean he has his moments it's like fuck so yeah no he's yeah 
I actually have on my my cricket machines right here, and I have Alex Jones is real, and he tried to eat my ass, slapped on in vinyl right there for the world to see. What I swear to God, one of these days I'm gonna meet him somehow, yeah. some way. I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna meet him. I'm gonna be wearing that shirt. I'm Dude. gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for him to notice, and yeah, it's gonna be the best day of my life. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get him to sign it. I'm gonna like do it like on a white shirt or something that he can easily like sharpie. I'm just turn around and be like, do it. Right, it, right there, right there, do it. Been waiting so long for this, Jones. Don't deny me. I made this shirt for you. Hold up, we can make you a matching one. You can have one too. <laughs> I've been waiting for so long. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please, I need this, sir. Please. Just a crumb. Just a crumb of attention. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so um, you also say that uh you've got a couple of kids and uh you do homeschooling so yes i kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about that like um uh, how do you how do you do and operate your homeschooling like uh do you have some kind of curriculum or do you kind of do like the unschooling thing or you know like what have you kind of figured out with that and like with everything that's going on in public schools i, I don't think it's a great idea to send your kids to public school whatsoever so oh god no yeah so i've been homeschooling my kids since the beginning i have many 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 horror stories of public school but like by the time i was 15 my second year of high school i was coming home every day to my stepdad just bawling my eyes out just begging him please don't make me go back like it was bad and so i got stuck in an independent charter program and um i only had to go to classes like twice a week you know for things like Spanish. You can't learn Spanish from a book alone, you know? So it was just little stuff like that. And, um, I excel. I, I, and I graduated with the highest, um, you have to take the California high school exit exam, you know, when you, and, and they basically set it up. So in your second year, first year of high school, you're preparing for it and you're learning the format. You're like, just getting ready. Second, third, fourth year, those are all your shots to take it. And they kind of expect most people to have to take it again and not pass it. I passed the first time with the highest scores of school I'd ever seen. Hell was, yeah. It was just because I was comfortable. I was finally like able to do things at my own pace the way I wanted to do it. I had more free time because I would just, I'm not going to lie. I was given my curriculum whole months in advance. I would knock it all out one day and have the rest of the month to do whatever the fuck I wanted. That's, from, you that's know? what I tell so. a lot of my friends is like, you know, like in public school, everybody's got to go at the same pace. But like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're an extremely it. curious I kid, like, like I was totally curious about a lot of stuff. And yeah, I would be so bored. Oh it's my God. Yes. There. And all my interests, like the schools weren't going to teach the kind of things I was interested in. You know, I wanted to get into astrobiology and my, and my school's not going to teach astrobiology. You know, I was like a big Carl Sagan stan and all that. Oh and yeah. Like, <laughs> study, like studying like organisms coming from mm -hmm. space and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted, first I kind of wanted to be the next Steve Irwin. And then once I hit about 16, I was like, mm, I think this is what I want to do. Those creatures now. can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've look, I've done some dumb shit. My poor son, my poor son, like, <laughs> He gets so concerned because, like, I'll, I'm not going to lie. I find roadkill and I bury it and I dig up the bones. Okay. Everyone knows this about me, though. Like, I am the, I am the bone <laughs> boy. But um, I have so many vintage, like, sears. Like, here, I have one right here. Hold on. Like, these little guys. Like, these. Do you know how many I have full of animal bones? <laughs> okay. This one, might, this one doesn't have any. That one does not have any, but most of them do. And, um, but I make stuff with them. Like, you know, uh -huh. there's a purpose to it. But so I, I'll, one time I'm like digging a hole and then there's a hole in that hole. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what's in that hole. And my son's like, get out of that hole. I'm like, <laughs> why? He's like, what if there's a rattlesnake in that hole? And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, okay, then I'll move away from the rattlesnake. He's like, no, you need to get out of that hole. He's like, are you kidding me right now? Are you serious? What if there's a rattlesnake in that hole right now, mom? You're not being very safe. And yeah. I'm like kid, do you know how many rattlesnakes I've had to deal with in my life? Do you know how many skins I have in my freezer right now? Like, I used to take care of an elderly one in rehab, for God's sake, son. Like, I'll be okay. Yeah. But now he's he's now he's following my path and every freaking five minutes. Mom, I caught another lizard. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, oh, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's going balls to the walls now. But, yeah, Um. anyway, Um. back to what I was doing. So, yeah, like, I made the de decision to homeschool very early on because, like, it just wasn't – I knew it was public school is just trash. And so um, in Arizona, Arizona is actually one of the best states you can homeschool your kids in. They oh, are really? very lenient. Yes. Some of the freest uh, rules and regulations they have in the whole country. 
So um, what I do is I do a combination of online curriculum plus other stuff. And I try to cater it to what my kids want to be and like their goals, their ambitions. Obviously, there are things I have to teach them, you yeah. know. Um, so they How use to read, time right, do math and stuff. Right, right, exactly. And both my kids, they do very well with reading. They're my daughter is a major. Well, they both are, to be honest. My daughter likes to read a lot of like novels and stories, and she's been always been a big bookworm. Uh, my son likes to. He's more like how I was growing up. He likes to read more like um, encyclopedias and and wildlife books, and you know, like he likes to learn about science and cookbooks. He loves cookbooks. He wants to be a chef when he grows up. Oh, cool. So, um. I do time for learning where they learn uh, math, some science. For me, it's not quite enough science. So we actually do more science beyond that. But they get all their math on there. With the exception of flashcards, we'll do math flashcards together too. Um, they do. They used to do their history and social studies on there. But I did. I may actually made multiple complaints. And they finally actually fixed it, apparently. I've been getting notifications like, we fixed it. We hold new curriculum for third grade social studies. And I'm just like... I don't care. Like I'm still gonna do it. I had to buy new books. <laughs> hey, I do it with the one on one. They read now. tragedy and hope, but <laughs> yeah, Carol no, quickly. it was bad because I'm like, look, my son would come to me, and he's a very smart kid. He tends to get like at least ninety percent on just about everything he does. So he comes to me and he's like, I failed on my social studies again. And I'm like, okay, what's wrong with this time? And he's like, the questions just made no sense. So I'm like, okay, let's go over it. I'm looking and I'm like you literally asked a question and gave multiple choice answers, and two of the answers are exactly the same. Or like some of the words were like auto. It was like someone typed it on their phone because the words would be completely different words than what they were supposed to be. Like they were just auto predicted. It was very bizarre. And Time for Learning is the most widely used and renowned homeschooling program in the nation. So I'm like, what gives here? I'm paying 35 bucks a month for this. Like what the hell? So I made a few complaints. I sent them screenshots and that, and that was about, I don't know, eight months ago or so and I guess that we did it but I didn't like it so no I do sit down I have history books with the kids and we sit down and read together and then we have social studies uh, worksheets and we do projects you know they'll like do things like create a whole, their whole um, a whole new country and they have to make a map and a little key and draw it all out and <clears throat> things like that um, their English and language arts is, is also on there but then I do extra things like spelling workbooks grammar workbooks they read uh, classic novels they actually just barely finished Alice in Wonderland um they're going to be getting to harry potter next actually that they, they want to start doing the harry potter series so yeah i do a mixture of online curriculum but then i cater when i feel it if i feel like the online stuff is not quite enough we do some more and then the elective stuff is based on what they want to do so like they're both learning sign language they've been learning sign language for years um they're getting into spanish my son has a very strong desire to be multilingual so he's been he focuses wow, very hard cool. on asl oh my god okay I'm screwed and this kid grows up. He will find like pretty <laughs> girls out in public and he'll like say something in ASL and they're like, oh, what, what was that sign language? And he's like, mm hmm. They're like, what did you say? And he'll be like, I was just saying you have a very nice outfit today. And I'm like, damn, son. <laughs> Who taught you this? Who taught you this? <laughs> so, wow. but he, but then he also cooks. I can tell him, hey, go, go in the kitchen and make me some tacos right now go get me some go get the oven going make me some freaking you know, bake me some fish whatever make me a salad go and he he can do it which i don't go make him do it but he asks to do it wow so like yeah he knows how to cook he paints he really loves painting he's learning guitar he can play a few songs on the guitar i mean so and then my daughter she likes to do jewelry she wants to be a doula she likes holistic medicine so she learns a lot oh, about wow. that kind of stuff cool. oh yeah so there is a lot of just the basics, the core stuff they need to learn, but then we do also heavily focus on things that pertains to what they want to be when they grow up. Yeah, that's cool because both of them have some kind of a skill that they're really interested in, yes. which I think is really important for people to have, like uh, mm -hmm. a skill that you can just fall back on, like if you, you know, if you're pursuing something else or whatever, but you always got that skill that you can fall back on. Yes, this is a conversation I have a lot, actually, like with my with my boyfriend and everything, because um, he's the same way as me where like he has a steady job, but he has a lot of things he can do for side hustles because he's learned how to do all different kinds of things and they're good money making hu side hustles. So he said if something were to happen to his job for some reason, he could very quickly make some, you know, old contacts and jump back into his previous work stuff. And I was put in that position. I was thriving as a bartender. My my success rate with teaching was really, 
real i actually i mean not to toot my own horn here i mean a little bit i guess but after um i, I had a curiosity i looked up to see if the, the academy i was teaching at was even still going because of covid and i found all these reviews and the time frame from when i was teaching there were all these reviews about like oh my god this the instructor was amazing and she was blah 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 blah. and so i mean i did my job well that's why my cryptid bartender stuff started taking off so bad you know like i dedicated myself and i and i excelled but then COVID hit and it all just got ripped out from under me and I had to make money again somehow. I was also freshly separated, you know, I still had two kids to take care of. And I had, I mean, I, I could not, obviously I couldn't just stop making money even for a little bit. So that's when I had to get back into my previous skills of handmade stuff. And it just happened to lead me a whole new direction, which has been a more successful direction. So I don't regret it. But yes, that I stress this so much to people. You have to have side hustles. You have to have other marketable skills because that happens all the time. People are like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do if I lose my job. I have no other skills. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I'm not creative. I'm not crafty. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all, I learned everything from YouTube. Yeah. Like point don't, blank. Don't limit yourself. I learned yourself. it all from fucking YouTube. Yeah, don't limit yourself. There's no reason to. Not this day and age. There's not. Right. sewing right. sewing i legit people keep joking about me starting my own church or my own cult and i'm just like guys <laughs> i started a homemade business because i couldn't find a fucking pot holder on amazon i liked like don't 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 this won't go well it'll go too well that's the problem but um i legit i i didn't know anything about sewing i didn't have a sewing machine i had nothing i was just like screw it i didn't make extra money and i'm not finding things i want my whole philosophy is i'll start my own whatever with blackjack and hookers and so that's how i <laughs> dove into it and I learned how to sew. Next thing I know, people are asking to buy things off of me. They're like, are you comfortable selling yet? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And so it just took off. Uh -huh. And same with cake decorating and baking and flavor profile. That's how I got so good at cocktails and mixology and how that became my strength when I was um, teaching is because I learned flavor profiling from so many years of working with baked goods and coming oh. up competitive baking. Like that's how I paired it all together. Once you get your foot in the door with one skill, you're going to be able to get your foot in the door with a whole bunch of other mm -hmm. new skills. Like you're not even going to realize you're going to think, Oh, I don't know if I can do this. And then you're going to be like, you're just going to automatically like, know, like your instincts are going to kick in because you're so familiar with this other thing. It's going to transfer to that. And then you're going to thrive more and more. And then you're going to get into more and more things and succeed in it because you just don't stop learning and growing. And all it takes is an hour on YouTube, guys. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's a trial and error and an hour of YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And I think I've seen you tweeting like you're like, I've, you know, public schools, I have like way more problems with like, I guess you'd have to go through a whole in, you know, de indoctrination, sending somebody to a public school. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess, I guess there's like the two different philosophies in homeschooling. I guess there's some people that do the unschooling part, which is like totally yes. unstructured. Do you mm -hmm. think there's like uh, something to be said for the structure and having a curriculum versus no structure when you're doing that? I think it really depends on the child, to be honest, and their age, their personality. Um, so um, I know some personally that went through the whole unschooling thing. And by then they were, when they started unschooling, they were actually like in teen, like, or like high school, they had no ambition. They had no desire to actually, so they just kind of sat around, dicking around watching documentaries. And now they, they're struggling to make something out of themselves as adults. Um, me, that wasn't so much of a problem. Like, in my free time, I mean, there was time plenty, you know, I play a lot of video games and stuff, but I had so much time. That was after I did all my work. And even then I was still self-educating because my mentality was, I want to go to college. I want to be the best, you know, I want to be on these freaking documentaries talking about life on other planets and shit. In order for that to happen, I, I got to get my ass in gear. So I was constantly driven to self-educate and push myself and push myself. So, um, it can work. My kids, honestly, like my son, if I really wanted to go the unschooling route, I probably could with him. He is a lot like me. He likes to educate. He, 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 like, I don't even say like, yeah, you guys can have, we can watch whatever TV you want for today. You know, with, I mean, I monitor, you know, they don't mean like literally anything, but you know, like, yeah, you can watch something SpongeBob or whatever. And he'll be like, okay, I'm going to watch Bear Grylls. 
Oh, I'm wow. gonna watch. Yeah. I'm gonna watch Alton Brown. I'm gonna watch uh, um, Unwrapped. I'm gonna watch Chopped. Like he watches things pertaining to what he wants to be when he grows up. He practices things on his own. Like I have. It takes no effort. Which my daughter's not so bad about it either. But she's a, she has that that push a little less. Um, if I'm like, if I tell my son, hey, get on the computer, you're gonna do your online stuff first. My daughter automatically will go, oh, I'm gonna go. She has coordination issues, so she practices handwriting. She's like, I'm gonna go read or I'm gonna go practice my handwriting, like on her own. So, um, but my kids have been homeschooled for a long time, and we did have to start off some st some structure and teach them how to structure themselves. Right. That's the you can't really just shove them in there and be like, go educate yourself. Like they're not, they don't know how you have to teach them how to teach themselves, but you also have to instill the love of learning. And yeah. I believe that's what public school kills. Yeah, public yeah, school yeah. kills the love of learning. So you, I feel like, I mean, some kids you can probably pull them out and be like, okay, now you're unschooled. So you can learn about whatever. Some kids will take that as an opportunity and go, oh, finally, I can finally pursue my dreams, my passions, and they'll go balls to the wall. Other kids, they just feel so hopeless at that point, and they feel dumb. They feel stupid. Their grades all sucked ass, and they feel like they're a problem. They have no confidence, and they're just like, what's the point? And they're just going to dick around. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't believe that there really is a right or wrong answer when it comes to unschooling. I believe it really just depends on the individual child. Right, right. Yeah, I think like um... – I think like apprenticeships, I, I, a lot of, a lot of the friends I've had that have been become more successful, they all d were working jobs like when they were young. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Like one of my buddies started working roofing with his uncles or something like that when he was like 14, 15, something like that. And yeah. like now he's like big time project manager guy doing business development stuff and all that. But, uh, um, but yeah, I guess it kind of gives you confidence too. Mm -hmm. Like yes, when you're earning exactly. your own money and like you, like you have some kind of uh way to, you know, make some money as a, a younger person, uh, whether it be like some kind of entrepreneurial venture you're doing or working as an apprentice with somebody or something like that. It gives you a lot more confidence, I think. As oh a no, it, it absolutely does. And confidence is a huge key to, I mean, I say this as somebody who used to professionally teach bartending and it sounds like, Oh, okay, you taught bartending, but it's a job. And my clients were, my students were essentially like, there was a, a decent chunk of them were military, very young military men looking for something else to make extra money. A lot of them were people desperate for a new start at life. One of my students was, a felon literally just barely released out of jail for murder. He was like in, he was in prison for 15 years, murdered somebody and he was looking to start his life entire, like all new. <clears throat> Another one was a woman who was a stripper under a DCS investigation and she needed a more stable source of income in order to keep her kids. I mean, I, my clients, <clears throat> they were broken, desperate people and they had no confidence they did not think they were going to pass. This was literally just like, yeah, my brother paid for this to help me get my foot in the door. And I'm just that desperate. And it, it would be, it was a two week program. I was teaching both morning and night classes. And in between those classes was, it was about a three hour gap where students could come in and practice because it was a legit bar setup. So they would get back there and practice. And sometimes, sometimes I would go over to the local diner and get a drink and just goof off with the old men. But um, other, most of the time I would stay behind and I would help the students. And my strength was learning the individual and figuring out their learning styles, figuring out what was going on wrong and working with them. And so they would come to me, God, the emotional investment. Because next thing I know, I'm their therapist. Yeah. hearing all these horror stories and just tragedies and why they're desperate. I'm just like coming out the coming home, just bawling my eyes out. Cause I'm like, I did not anticipate this in this job. Yeah. <laughs> you become every time. Therapists. Oh yeah. Every time it was lack of confidence. And so I would work with them and work with them and show like, no, you just need to change your learning style. This method isn't working for you. Let's flip the switch. Let's do it this way. Let's try to remember them. you know, and at the end, those students that struggled the most and had the least confidence and were failing throughout were usually the ones to pass with the highest scores. Wow. And they would come to me 
bawling their eyes out on me, thanking me for showing them and giving this whole new inspiration and like this strength that they didn't know they had in themselves. And we would usually exchange like, like, oh yeah, here's my Instagram, whatever, you know, and I would watch them thrive. I would watch them get these jobs and succeed and their lives would turn around. And it's all because lack of confidence. And we're still seeing this in adults. Like it's a very real thing. And it's because of public schools. I'm telling you now. Yeah. A lot it's, of it uh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, some of the stuff that I've looked into with um, Howard uh, Lichtman is also known as Etienne de Bolete squared, but he created this book called government dash scam. And then he goes through the whole history of the public school system and he uh, shows how it's basically to extend ad- adolescence and sources like John Taylor Gatto's books. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, John, I've read his. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's, that's the idea is to just make people that are going to, you know, not be able to critically think and not be able to have that confidence and kind of cr- kill your creativity and stuff so that, uh, you know, you just, or just another worker bee drone kind of person. Oh yeah, no, it's it's horrible. Um, just the whole system is literally designed to create drones, and the best way to do that is to crush their spirit and to make them feel like they can't do anything on their own. And they'll sugarcoat and be like, "Oh yeah, you're this overachiever. You can do this. You can do that. You're so great." But then they pair you. That's where they ruin you. They say, well, you're so smart. You're so successful. You're doing so great in school. We're going to pair you with the kids who don't give a shit. And they're going to drag you down because they need their grades raised. And you can help with that. You're our smartest student. You're our best. You know, they guilt you into doing it. So then you're spending your time trying to help these people that don't want to try. And you can't focus on yourself anymore. And you're just angry and tired and frustrated. And that also that just gives you this total, like, miserable point of view in life. You know, it kind of, I mean, I had that bad. I had that so bad where I was always paired with those students. And I'm like, what, why do this to me? Now I'm not thriving like I used to thrive because I'm wasting my time dealing with somebody that doesn't even want to try. But then on the flip side, what you're not realizing as that student, because you are also a student, you're just thinking, oh, you're just a lazy piece of shit and I'm doing all your dirty work. That student is being a lazy piece of shit because they don't have the confidence to do it themselves. Yeah. They don't have the ambition. They don't feel like they can really succeed and do better. They don't have that drive because if they really thought they could do better than you and if they really wanted to, if they actually felt like they had hope for the future, they would be doing it. Yeah. So you don't realize that when you're a student, but then as you get older, you're like, oh shit, that's why. Because these were, these kids were just broken quicker than you were. And that, that's my hope for the future is like one of the kind of the white pills is like seeing people like yourself that are homeschooling and, um, you know, the, the kids that are, you know, learning uh, outside of the system, you know, they're, they're the ones that are going to, you know, take up the torch of, for, uh, you know, fighting for liberty in the future. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, what we're doing as far as like talking about some of these things is... Uh, I guess we're kind of planting seeds. I yes. Don't, I don't really know if, 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 uh, you know, we'll see a, a total paradigm shift in Liberty in our lifetimes, but, uh, but, uh, you know, we got to speak out, I think, and, and get ideas out there and maybe be some inspiration for others. I don't, I personally don't believe we're going to see that in our lifetime. Um, just the way I really don't believe so. But with that said, this, those seeds are very important because even if it doesn't happen or, or even if it doesn't happen at all, not just in our lifetime, even if that paradigm just never happens, we, I feel like we are kind of obligated. Anybody who has children, we need to try to set our, our, our offspring, our next generations up for the best lives they can possibly have. So, you know, cause it's not just my children, it's my children's children. Those are my grandkids. And then those are my grandkids, children. And then those are my grandkids, you know? So, I mean, those are still my lifeblood and to an extent my responsibility. So if I can plant those seeds and if I can, you know, encourage others to do the same, 
we can at the very least have where like our grandkids, maybe there's going the world's going to be more difficult for them to live in, but maybe they're in a position where they can separate themselves from that. Now they have the knowledge and the resources and the preparation and everything they need to just pull themselves away and just live their best lives. And then they can worry about their children and their grandchildren, et cetera. So um, yeah, I'm not very confident in a full on switch, but what can you do other than just try your best and separate yourselves from it all? And I mean, I wish I had as much knowledge as I have now, as I did grow up. My mother, oh my God, my mom regrets putting us in public school so much, you know, like, yeah. I mean, you got to understand, you know, for, you know, you know, nineties babies, the internet was nowhere near what it is now. So all that kind of information, it, what, I mean, it was kind of out there, but it wasn't out there like it is now. So at that point, you're kind of just going with what you think makes sense, what other people tell you to do. You don't really have as many resources as you can, you know, to look up and see what, you know, get other opinions. It just wasn't the same. And especially not to the extent where we have now, where we can just yeah, look yeah. it up. You yeah, know, I we kinda, didn't have that back then. I kind of have so. a theory about that. Cause like there's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of four brothers and there's like a big difference between myself and my brothers that are like three or four years younger. No, same. I'm the oldest of four and they're all boys. And, yeah. And, same. and they're way like caught into the system and it's like somehow I, I didn't get as caught up in it. And I think it's because they kind of grew up with the internet mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we were like, yeah, I guess part of the, I mean, I was born in 86. So like, you know, we didn't have the internet. We'd have to, we'd get told to go, go play outside. You know, we'd be, right. play, pick up football games or ride our bikes down and figure out, just get into trouble, I guess, like go in the woods and. Oh yeah, absolutely. Find animals and stuff to mess with. <laughs> no. And I feel, I mean, there's definitely a lot of that uh, with me and my brothers as well too. I'm honestly, a big part of that is simply because I was the oldest and the only girl. And I grew up in a very, um, <clears throat> I don't know if fundamentalist is really the right word. I was in a very strict church though. And it very heavily pushed like the woman's place is to please the man. Like my role was to learn how to be a housewife. My role was to learn how to be a mother. Like that was, so then my brothers, they didn't have anywhere near that same level of responsibility or anything. And they were largely like, you know, lots of video games and TV and all. And I mean, I did have my extent to that too, but I still got my shit done, you know? So there is definitely a huge difference between me and the, and the other three. Absolutely. Because I was seen as like a second mom, oh, you know, wow. while yeah. they were, they were who I was supposed to help take care of and pick up their slack. So, um, and yeah, they definitely had more internet. Like me, I was like, yeah, I want to either work with animals or I want to maybe find animals on another planet. And like, you know, my whole thing was creatures. I love working with wildlife, you know, like that's always been my shtick. Um, just intergalactic ones sound a lot cooler. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, well, with them, they were like, I want to be a um, video game designer. I want, you know, like it was video game based. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Both of them. They are also much younger than I am. The youngest one is like seven years younger than me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely like a, a gap there for sure. Yeah. That's the same with my brothers. They both went into uh, computer stuff. Mm hmm. And, yeah. Um, yeah. That's what they were all about is all the video games and all that stuff. So yeah, I think there's, I think there's that gap, you know, cause it's like, you had to be, I don't know, you constantly, I guess, could do stuff. You could play video games with your friends or whatever online. And you, you, you know, that kind of consumes you, but like before all that existed, you know, it was fun to go build a fort, you know? Right. Right. I try to keep my kids, um, pretty, we don't have like cable or anything. We do have, um, like a couple of streaming services, but even then I'm like, you only get like an hour every, you know, like an hour a day at best, um, or a couple hours, maybe just depending, you know, like depends, kind of depends on what all we accomplished that day. If we were really busy, they did really good on their scores. They got a bunch of stuff done and, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, you can have a couple hours to just kind of chill and, you know, whatever. But I mean, but they have it in them to where they want to watch educational stuff usually. And so, I mean, otherwise they're playing pretend, they're building stuff, they're creating, they're, you know, they're, they're using their hands. 
And that's, I mean, that's really what I much rather prefer. Absolutely. I don't want it generation. I see, you know, younger kids that, you know, my kids hang out with and all and how the effects that TV have on them and video games and TikTok shit too. Like parents <laughs> and grandparents who are like letting their kids scroll TikTok. TikTok algorithms are not like YouTube algorithms. It's not like you, there's just those, like, like, here are some videos, click which one you want to watch. You're watching whatever the fuck they want to show you. And I mean, it's nasty shit. It's like soft core porn at some time. It's like, you're letting your kids just scroll that. What? Yeah. It's horrible. So I'm like, yeah, I, I don't. Some people think I'm a little like, too, they're like, oh, they're going to see it someday anyway. And <laughs> okay, you're the parent. Right. If I can prevent this, so can you. Oh, but it's so hard. Life is hard, bitch. Yeah. Being a parent is hard, bitch. <laughs> That's not an excuse. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't remember like, having a cell phone no. until I was in college. I, well, yeah, I was 19. I yeah, a, a I little, was 19. A little track phone. I could send text messages or make a phone call. That was about oh, yeah, I yeah. Do. I had like the, I could barely, barely, barely pop on a shitty ass pixelated version of Facebook, and that was it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, was a, it was not a smartphone. It did not count as a smartphone. Like, good Lord, no. Yeah. Yeah. I just, that, the excuses. But parents are taught to resent their children. I really believe this. It's, I mean, think about when COVID hit and all the public school kids had to start being doing school. From, the parents weren't even teaching their kids. The parents weren't even the ones planning the curriculum or everything at that point. They were literally just housing their kids while the kids sat in front of a laptop while the teacher continued to teach them. And they're, oh my God, my kids have been home for four days and I haven't had a break and I'm losing my mind. Fuck you. Yeah. I'm sorry, not sorry. Fuck you. Okay, I have been homeschooling my kids 24 seven, like, always with me since day one okay planning the curriculum executing the curriculum doing everything with them since day one two kids one of which has speech and coordination delays i'm a narcoleptic mother okay i sleep crash so easily i fall asleep i go paralyzed i can't drive i can't even take my kids to go out and do shit and like you know hey can you watch the kids for a little bit so i can i get none of that okay so for you to sit there and bitch and moan that someone else is teaching your kids on a screen and they happen to be, oh, where they fucking live yeah, doing it. And you're, oh my God, I've been a break from them in four days. I got to go drink a whole ass bottle of wine and sit in the tub and binge watch Doctor Who now because my life is so fucking hard. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. I I'm sorry. I'm so sick of this shit. Parents are so ready to dump their kids on someone else and make... I just as, to make the kids know someone else's problem. They don't want to parent their own kids. Their kids are in public school for what? Eight, nine hours a day. Right. They come home. They got to do homework for another one to two hours. Then theoretically, they're supposed to do like some extracurricular activity or something. The parents are pretty much just there for dinner. I know. Yeah. And then they go to bed and repeat the cycle. And you're bitching that you have to deal with your kids for three days. And, you know, I have no tolerance <sighs> for this shit. I really don't. And, you know, you know, we live in a society that, uh, you know, has pushed both men and women to be at work and not be away from mm -hmm. the home. And, like, I think that is so bad for uh, kids because, I mean, I oh, remember yeah. being raised like that. Like, my both my parents worked and, like, they were absent. Just like you said, it was like we saw them for dinner, maybe got to talk yeah. to them a little bit. Yeah, they exactly. They didn't know well, what was going exactly on in our it. lives at all. Right. Well, that's part. exactly it too. On top of that, now it's not enough that like most families cannot have the mom stay at home and be the housekeeper and everything. But most of them have to have both parents working, which means even less time with the kids. So that's why it's like, really, like you see your kids like an hour or two a day. These are your children for God's sake. Yeah. Why did you have them? If you can't tolerate being around them for more than an hour a fucking day. Like, what are you doing? Right. And so you're just going to dump them on somebody else and make it someone else's problem? Like, well, really? Well, and, you know, if you put your, your kids in the hands of somebody else, like, don't be, uh, ex don't be surprised that they don't share your same values. 
Oh, right. That's yeah. what's so funny to me about like conservatives. And I just want to make it clear because a lot of people get all get so offended when I say these kinds of things. I am not attacking those who don't have a choice and they just like they have to stick their kids in public school for whatever reason. I am not. I'm talking about the ones that like simp the fuck out of the public school system and like they just <laughs> use it to their advantage and they just want. I'm talking about like those types. OK, like I understand there's a huge difference. Absolutely. But um, with that said, um, shit, what was I saying before? Right before that, the uh, about um, conservatives and kind of, conserv- you know, okay. Kind of- What's so funny to me is how many of them get all like, "Well, it's because we need to bring God back in our schools." And I'm sitting here like, "You really trust the public school system to teach your kids about God accurately? They can't even teach about Betsy Ross accurately, and you're you're gonna expect them to fucking teach your kids the Bible? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah that's not gonna fucking go." horribly wrong no like what the (laughs) fuck are you doing we just gotta take the system back yeah that's not gonna work that's not gonna happen and quite honestly if that's how you i feel like that's honestly a very selfish thing to do too is to say well we need to take we just need to fight and we need to just take the system back no you need to pull your kids out of it your kids are not your weapons because now you're using them as tools to complete an agenda when in reality you should simply be protecting your children so instead of subjecting them to all these horrible things and feeding them to the wolves when you acknowledge that the public school system has so many problems you're the one sticking them in that and then going well just tough it out kiddo we got to take it back why why are you making this your personal mission to take it back and why are you forcing your child to partake in your agenda that's really not going to do you any good in the long run like it doesn't make any sense pull your kids out if you can if you can't you can't but if you can do it and stop using your children for virtue signaling because that's what you're fucking doing yeah yeah don't limit yourself like we said before you know don't try to limit yourself and you know, it might be hard, but oh, but, well, but damn, yeah, everything's fucking hard. <laughs> Look, like, what's harder? What's gonna be harder? Okay, you spend all these years sacrificing your freedom, spending some extra money, maybe sacrificing a bit of your sanity. You know, um, home, but but homeschooling your kids, do dedicating yourself to them, protecting them, nurturing them, teaching them, and watching them grow up to be these thriving successful amazing adults because of you yeah or taking the easier route letting it be someone else's problem sometimes having to deal with pta meetings and whatnot but then watching your child fall subject because guys your kids are spending more time around teachers and other broken kids than they're spending around you who do you think is going to have a stronger influence on them right and then the free time they're watching tv and shit on the internet unsupervised seeing and reading who god knows what don't be surprised when your kids your sweet little christian republican baby grows up to be a fucking shaved headed antifa soy boy commie like that's on you dude that's on you right you stuck them in the middle of that so what's going to be harder to witness the process and the growing pains while you raise them or watching your kid grow up to be the very thing you swore against. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. just yep. something that uh, personal responsibility. If you truly want to be free, you have to be responsible for, you got to walk the walk. You can't just talk, talk for it all. That's yeah. what it, yeah. that's what it comes down to. And a lot of people are just too intimidated to walk the walk because it's hard. But again, life is hard. God, don't I know it. Jesus, like, life is really hard. But the problem is, guys, it's only going to get harder. Yeah. It's yeah, not getting yeah. easier. Yeah, and you got to strengthen yourself through some trials. I, you know, I've talked about this with my coworkers. It's like uh, going back to the scene in The Matrix where they're talking about how they created a perfect world for people. And it's like uh, people just rejected it because there's no gauge for you to – actually understand like uh you know when when you're striving to do something better or make yourself better or whatever you have no uh relative gauge if everything's comfortable all the time you don't realize it's good doesn't that you don't have good without bad yeah it's it's like a story with no you know action or uh, like Mm -hmm. any kind of uh 
you know, something that interferes with the hero or whatever they have to overcome, you know? Right. That's boring. It just gets too boring, you know? Well, there's just no perspective. Yeah. When you have life so easy and cush and everything's handed to you and you just avoid all responsibility, the moment one thing goes wrong, you're going to lose your shit. You're not going to know how to handle it. You're not going to have the strength to handle it. And that's a big problem what's going on now and i understand the want to make sure your kids had a better i mean of course i want my kids to have a much better life than what i ever had i had a shit shit child my god just one thing after another i don't want that for my kids but i'm also not going to put them in this constant bubble where everything is so perfect and they're spoiled all the time and they don't have to face reality because then they're going to grow up to be adults they're going to have no concept of what the real world is about and then as soon as something goes wrong they're going to be a fucking wreck right and that's what we're witnessing with a lot of people right now yeah right yeah Yeah. you could probably describe a lot of the insanity that you see on a lot of these uh uh woke people that uh they just don't know how to deal with themselves or the world and convenience is our demise just freaking out (laughs) it's convenience convenience is our demise you know like i was thinking about this so like you know my house it's uh on the edge of Saguaro National Park, very rich Native American history and whatnot, you know, and it's hot as balls. It's the fucking desert. Everything is out to kill you. (laughs) And, but I was thinking about how I'm like, you know, all these like Native Americans, like they've lived in this climate and they were so resourceful. They didn't just survive. Like you read about the things they made and built and crafted and the things they figured out with just the limited resources they had around them, how they could kill a bison and use every single bit of that bison literally every bit for something it's incredible and i'm just like god i'm sitting here bitching that my air conditioner is not strong enough you know and they didn't have air conditioner and so i'm thinking like we're not what we're meant to be at all as a race you know and 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 another thing that kind of puts on so like i'm known for being barefoot i don't like wearing shoes if i can help it yeah and that includes in the hot pokey cactus ridden rattlesnake ridden desert sand like i'm barefoot and uh i get horrible looks from ups drivers <laughs> but <laughs> for me i've been doing it so long i was always that way i liked being barefoot so like my feet like Your they're feet they can, they can take it. used to it they're used to it and they don't even it's, it's amazing they, excuse me for a second but they look amazing for the abuse i put them through <laughs> but, but they've conditioned to get to that point while other people they're like oh i stepped on a cactus and i'm losing my shit and i'm just like yeah, whatever. Nah, grab this cat i've done this before i like had a massive choya stuck in my foot i grabbed nearest thing was a cat was a cattle skull and i pick it up and a, i just kind of wedge it out with like chunk of the skull I'm like that's that's the most arizona thing i can imagine right there but <laughs> i've done it <laughs> and i say that people are like what the fuck and i'm like well that's what you got to do and but even that is weak compared to what generations that lived there, you know, hundreds of years ago would have to go through. So you think about it, wildlife adapts, right? Yeah. They will literally completely, like their bodies will change in order to adapt to their surroundings based on climate differences or migration or whatever it may be. We don't. We try to shape everything around us. Yeah, to, to make it more to comfortable. What, to yes, fly. to make it more comfortable for us, more convenient for us. We're walking and climbing and moving less. We're sitting more. We're eating unhealthier things because it's cheaper and more convenient. We, But then we have this, like, houseplants and whatnot, major fad, right? So everyone's crazy about succulents because they can bring them into their house and not kill them. It's because we are craving the outside. We are animals. Yeah, we've only been separated. We're killing from... those instincts in us. Yeah, we've only been us. separated from nature for like a hundred years or so. You know. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. Tinfoil hat time. I'm telling you right now. In the next 10, 15, 20 years, there's going to be something major that happens. And like a separation no one, of the species, like a break, I don't know, a just something, just I don't know what, just something, and everyone's going to be t- too broken to be able to resist it. Because think about what we've been doing, especially in the past couple of years, because of COVID. 
nobody i'm telling you that this generation of children is going to have the absolute worst immune systems we have ever seen because yeah. they've been trapped and locked indoors away from sunlight away from they have not been able to build their immune systems everything's been overly sanitized they their immune systems are fucked plus they're eating unhealthy they're eating processed junk food and sugar non-stop everything's got seed oils and sugars out the ass i mean it's bad well and the depletion Lack of the of minerals in the soil too Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I read not long ago something like in the 50s even. I think it was like in order to get the amount of nutrition out of an or out of one orange from the 50s, you have to eat like eight of them now or something like that. Like I could be loose on the numbers there, but it was like we had to eat multiple. We had to eat several of them right. just to get the same nutrition that you would have had before. It's that bad. So we're not – that's why multivitamins are a thing now. Like we're not getting what we need. We are told to hide from the sun. We're told to avoid touching everybody and everything and – Obviously, like hygiene is important, but when you're over sanitizing, you're not building your immune system. Right. So we're, and then we're being told that exercise is Nazi propaganda, for God's sake. We're being, I mean, we are being told to no longer be part of nature. Yeah. I, and that's I, what we ultimately are. We are nature. And oh, yeah. even all this plant based shit. I'm sorry. We are nature. We are omnivores. We have just as right. We need meat, yeah. but we're being pushed not to eat it. So we're being pushed to eat processed plant-based food instead. That's also full of bullshit and lack of nutrients. I mean, yeah, it's, it's got horrible. sugars and carbs and and those things is, can lead to inflammation. And uh, I've noticed this. Uh, I, I'm a big dude. I'm kind of going on a weight loss journey myself. I mean, I've and, been there, dude. Uh, I get it. I've been there. And uh, yeah, I started eating or uh, leaning towards carnivore and trying to eat just more of the um, more meat and, mm -hmm. and cut out the carbs and sugar yes. and stuff. And uh, I've already lost about 30 pounds so far. So there you go. And there not, you go. And not having to like work out like intensely or whatever to do that. It's just I believe it. changing the, the diet. Oh, yeah. No, I totally believe it. Tremendously. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and because you're doing what we're supposed to do. And I mean, I don't know if that's kind of my own, like big ass, like, you know, I feel like a lot of things and everything from like big pharma and all this stuff, like we are being pulled away from who we're supposed to be. We're being taught to rely on mankind as right. opposed to what, you know, just who we are as a species. And it, we are seeing it kill us. It is our demise. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the thing. Well, we can fix this. We can fix this. We can fix this. Just throw more money towards this and that, more taxes, more of this and that, and we can fix this. Well, we're not fixing it. We're making everything worse. Right. Yeah. Uh, you might be interested in this since you're interested in the biology and everything. I read uh, a book by Rupert Sheldrake called Morphic Resonance, and he mm -hmm. talks about kind of like the, that concept of like we are part of nature and everything is is connected and like uh biology expresses these fields that the it can it can be like uh part of the way you can explain like epigenetics like uh you'll see a fruit fly that adapts like the spine to help it against predators and then the mm -hmm. next generation has that spine even more pronounced mm -hmm. so it's a yeah it's a fascinating book about uh, oh yeah absolutely i actually used to really be into anthropology and stuff too back in the day yeah and um uh, i know way too much about how they're trying to bring dinosaurs back to life like it's one of my random things i know way too i like an ungodly amount of information about like the real jurassic you know? park oh god don't get me started on that spiel but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw you a cryptid bartender so uh, oh, I, was, I was that was one of the things i okay. was gonna ask okay. you is if you were into the kind of the paranormal and uh and okay maybe fun fact ufos and stuff like that fun fact i was actually almost a published author on cracks.com oh yeah like 12 years ago over that exact subject <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, like legit. But shit hit the fan. My laptop went to shit, and I and then I ended up fucking like just life just went to shit right then, right before they were gonna. All I had to do was reformat it, and they were gonna publish it and pay me and everything, and then boom, yeah. But that was what the subject was was dinosaur resurrection. Oh, so wow. yeah, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, no, I mean, I could go full ass, like, in depth conspiracy uh, theory, yeah, spiritual would... sense plus scientific. I mean, like, all angles. I can, like, full ass Joe Rogan right now, but I, would... I, mean, <laughs> I do love that stuff. That's yeah. a spiel, though. I don't know if you want that right now. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're coming up on about two hours. Yeah. So, uh, I figured, um, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, uh, Duality of Han, and, uh, uh, is there, like, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, you can do your plugs. Like, where can people find you and how can people support you um, if you want to give everybody all that information? All right. So, yeah, I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, as you said, you know, Duality of Han. And um, I will be starting, starting my podcast, hopefully in the near future. Um, if you want to support me, um, right now my epoxy stuff is on hiatus just because I got to set up a new workstation for it. But I do still have a lot of epoxy stuff already made for sale too that i've been slowly but surely putting in my shopify link which is uh i believe it's my shopify you know instead of just trying to think about it let me just pull it up here <laughs> um, um but yeah you can find it in my store link and i also do custom t-shirts which i usually just kind of advertise on social media because they didn't say violence. <laughs> so <laughs> you can just message me directly and order one for me that way my shopify it Dang it, Twitter, stop freezing. I actually <laughs> have it pulled up here. I can show Oh, it okay. I just pulled it up too. I just got it. Bit. But yeah, it's dualityhandmade.myshopify.com. So I'm it's a fairly new, so I'm still adding stuff onto that shop as you know times go by. And uh, but you can order through there, you can order through me directly in DM. That's usually how I do t-shirts and whatnot. And if you want to see photos, then just let me know and I'll just kind of spam you a shitload of photos. <laughs> but um, all support is appreciated. That is my main source of income since I can't legally drive every I'm kind of in a wonky situation. So um, yeah, and like I said, I will be doing the podcast and whatnot in the very near future, talking sometimes political stuff, homeschooling stuff, you know, whatever the freaking hell i feel like talking about honestly and um yeah that's about it well awesome i appreciate you uh taking the time out to talk to me today i really enjoyed our conversation and i hope to have you back on in the future maybe we can get into absolutely. maybe some of the you know paranormal stuff or whatever oh so. absolutely i can go on all day about all that shit too i've done it many times <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah yeah just let me know i'd be more than happy to do it again Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank well, you. Upon, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and, uh, Me too. and uh, everything is uh, going smoothly for you going into Working the future. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.